Okay, everyone get comfortable. How you doing? My name is Keith Schmitz. I'm with Thrasher's North Shore, and it's a pleasure to welcome you all. Let's face it, you're here because you care, right? That's been our latest phrase, right? And because you care, you're here because you want to be aware about what's going on with this election. Uh, we've had, I must say, when it comes to candidates, an embarrassment of riches versus the other party, which just has embarrassments. <laughs> so, we know what has to be done. Those of you who have, just out of curiosity, who in this room has lived in Wisconsin all their lives? Yeah, that's great, that's a great number. You know, there's certain things that we come to expect from our state, fair play, the spirit that everyone matters, the idea that progress matters, and that's one thing that we've had throughout our history. All the way from the dairy cream separator that was started back in the 1880s up to stem cell research. And all of these things have been under threat over the last eight years, which we could probably affectionately call Wisconsin's dark ages. I cannot stress enough, you're all here. The important thing, of course, is knowing what the candidates are all about. More important, you need to find time to get involved with the election. You have to get involved with this election. So, what steps would you take to reverse mass incarceration? Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks so much for being here on a great afternoon outside, but we have good people here talking about really important things. I have to just re reiterate something that was just talked about, and that's around the issue of leadership. Here we have Scott Walker in office for how many years and how many years, and Lincoln Hills for that same period of time has been at war with young, young people that were there to be rehabilitated and the adults that were there to help him, help them. Absolutely, he never stood, stepped in, and we have a situation now where, uh, where we're paying good money, good money to correct that situation, but it should not have gone on that long. So the issue here is to be not soft on crime, but to be smart on crime. There's, there's all sorts of places across this country, red states and blue states, that fr frankly have figured it out. There are places like Texas where they decided to reinvest uh, the savings by closing down correctional institutions. For every one dollar that they have uh, put into rehabilitation, they've received nine dollars in savings. So it's not even a, a money issue. It's about where we are as a state. Wh what are our priorities? priorities? My priorities are about rehabilitation. We have to focus on providing the services for people so that when they, are, they come out into the community again, they are ready to be productive in society. We have to stop the idea of having mandatory minimum sentences. We have to stop, we have to decriminalize the whole issues of using drugs. We have to have drug courts. The bottom line, we have to stop institutionalizing people and incarcerating people and help people. Any place you go across the state, people agree with this. This isn't about making sure that people are safe. It makes, we, it's about making sure that people absolutely believe that they can reintegrate into society and make a difference. Thank you very much. It's a great topic. What steps would you take to reverse the trend in the last eight years, the decreasing environmental regulation and relaxation of environmental protections? This is a great topic. I, I got my bachelor's degree in zoology and chemistry, and so science is part of my DNA. And I can tell you, you know, there's all sorts of things we need to worry about, but it's overall, we have to believe in science. There's a reason why certain conclusions are reached through the scientific method. We need to value science and make decisions based on science. My background will help me do that. I will also tell you that uh, we have lots of protections already in the book. Clearly, the, the present governor and his staff have decided that we're, going to be, we're not going to be balancing business interests with environmental interests. We are going to value business interests. Let's just take a look at water. Water, Texas has oil, we have water. I'll take water any day. But you think about western Wisconsin, where we have frack mining being 
That's a significant issue is in local control being taken away from folks. Central Wisconsin, where we have we have lots of high capacity wells taking water out of the out of the aquifers and for business purposes and lakes and rivers are, 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 are draining in central Wisconsin. And of course, eastern Wisconsin, we have the problem with, uh, high, with uh, large farms and CAFOs, polluting wells. And so all those things are important and lead in our water also, I will suggest. Anyway, the bottom line is we have to, we have to value science. I would put the science, scientists back to work at the Department of uh, Public Instruction. I'll say it quickly. We actually stole uh, their uh, uh, DNR's uh, climate change uh, uh, website and put it on ours before they took it away. So if you're looking for it, look at the dpi.org. We will change the way we do things in the state. An independent DNR secretary, an independent board that, that values all, that talks about all the values that we have in, in the state of Wisconsin. We can do this. It's not rocket science, but it is science. We will change this. Thank you very much. What should the state do to guarantee access to high quality and affordable health care for all citizens? I had the great pleasure on Friday to spend uh, several hours at the uh, Wisconsin Dental Association Mission University in Milwaukee. It's one of those situations that were frankly life-changing for me, and I, I grew up with a physician and a nurse in the family and my daughter's a physician, but to see the need in this state is just extraordinary. I, I, talked, to, I talked to a dentist um, from, from Mount Horeb that I knew, and he had, by 7 o'clock in the morning, extracted 22 teeth, honest to God, and the line outside of State Fair Park went on for blocks. They did everything they could. They took x-rays there, they cleaned teeth there, they extracted teeth there, they, they had partial bridges installed and created there. It was unbelievable. It, I'll never forget it as long as I live. The work that was done by all those, all those professionals and all those people that are needy in, this, in, the, in the city of Milwaukee. Now the problem with that is it's not solving the problem. There's a basic problem of access to health care. There's a basic problem to make sure that, that uh, people do preventative care so that they don't have to have two or three teeth uh, extracted at a, at, a, at a free clinic. What I'll do as, as governor to help on this is to make sure that we take that Medicaid money. That's an absolute necessity. We have to make sure that we, that we um, um, that we set up those exchanges correctly. There is a reason why the people in Minnesota pay half the price for the same care as we get here. It's half the price. I was in La Crosse not a long time ago, frankly, where someone was going to actually move across the river to live in, live in uh, Minnesota and still work in La Crosse just to get the better health insurance. This state has, and Scott Walker has completely screwed that up. The other thing that I'll promise you is, as governor, we will never ever have pre-existing conditions impacting the way you get your health insurance. I'm a cancer survivor. I'm particularly uh, cognizant of that issue, and we, that will never happen under my watch. We need more transparency and accountability, and the red flag is out. What is the importance of a living minimum wage, and what do you see as a viable approach? I know there's lots of teachers and retired teachers in the audience, but I, I will... Just to remind you of things that you don't want to hear, but when uh, Act 10 came into place, from there to today, uh, the average teacher wage in the state of Wisconsin has gone down 8.5%. And that does not include what came out of your pockets for various fringe benefits. So, living wage, uh, I, I guess, but I, I can tell you it's just barely. And it's playing out. It's playing out in a way that's ex exceedingly important to our state's economy and our democracy in that we have fewer and fewer and fewer people wanting to get into the profession. That aside. I remember when I was a kid, I uh, watched, uh, I was, can't remember how old, but watching Martin Luther King march on Washington, he gave that wonderful speech. That speech people may have forgotten about, but uh, or haven't forgotten about. Well, one thing they may have forgotten about, that whole march was about a living wage. And if we had implemented that living wage at that time, our minimum wage right now would be $15 an hour. So 
we need to not miss a point like that again. And we're not rebounding very well from, from, the, uh, from the recession. We, we just saw it in today's General Sentinel that we are, cons you know, we're not leaping ahead in, in, uh, uh, with, the, with the new economy. And th things aren't going well here in Wisconsin. Ma wages are stable. So here's, here's the things that I feel are important. Obviously, affordable health care will have more, uh, more take-home pay. But we also, I also support a minimum wage. And like Bernie Sanders talked about, making sure it happens over a period of time. I'm a huge supporter of collective bargaining. I spoke against the implementation of Act 10. I continue to do it. I used to uh, negotiate for WEAC. We can change right to work. We can change prevailing wage. We can make these uh, recertification uh, not the hurdle that it is now. We can have dues deductions for people. That is critically important, but I will tell you that it is so important for the state of Wisconsin, I know we're going to talk about it later, but infrastructure jobs are family supporting jobs, and it's a two for one. If we improve our infrastructure in the state of Wisconsin, it's good for transportation and other things, but it's also good for our economy with high paying family supporting jobs. Thank you. Uh, how would you uh, prioritize transportation needs and payment for both rural, urban and rural communities? If you're driving to uh, Wausau, or you're driving from Wausau, you will see two outdoor signs that show Scott Walker crawling out of a pothole, and they call them <laughs> Scott Holes. <laughs> and, well, they should. Governor Walker drew the line in the sand, no new taxes, we're going to only way we're going to change uh, our transportation system is through borrowing. We cannot do that anymore. We are almost dead less in the country, as I mentioned before, and we can't afford that. We have people in uh, northern Wisconsin that they're actually uh, scraping the asphalt off of the roads, and uh, so that we're going back to gravel roads. How about that for going back to the future? Let's advertise that on the trains in, Ch in the Illinois in the metro coming up, bringing the workers to uh, Foxconn. Come move to Wisconsin. You can drive on gravel roads. The bottom line is, wherever you are in the state of Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, where you're, where you're filling potholes, we've taken away local control of the ability to people to raise money, people doing wheel taxes. There are just, there's just absolutely no way around this. We have to invest. Western Wisconsin, talk about bridges. We downgraded the bridges just this last week in western Wisconsin, so now it's going to take two or three trips from the farm to the market to get things there because we, we're afraid that the bridges are going to collapse. So we need to do something about transportation. We need to do something about uh, what transportation issues are around mass transit in the, st in the urban areas. We need to invest. Yes, gas tax should be on the, on the table. Yes, toll roads should be on the table. Yes, cuts should be on the table. But whatever we do, we cannot, the status quo isn't going to work, folks. We need to have a strong infrastructure. We need to have a strong uh, uh, transportation system. If we want to be economically developed and competitive across the country, we need to do these things. And we can. That's, that's the problem. This is an issue that we can solve, that Republicans get it. Who represents all those places in northern Wisconsin that, uh, that has this, the issues uh, around uh, transportation? Republicans, they get it. We can change this. This will be one of the first things we do as governor. Uh, so in what ways would you guarantee quality, affordable education for all state st citizens? I mean, if you saw the article that was in the New York Times this week about the small town of Arena where they're losing their, their, their small school, uh, that's a problem there, but it's also a problem over here by the lake in the city of Milwaukee because we've got some very deep problems that need to be dealt with. And, then, and one final thing, where would you see the role of vouchers in the uh, educational picture in Wisconsin, considering that uh, it's estimated about 30,000 kids will be on vouchers uh, by the end of Scott Walker's term? I talked about science before. The research clearly shows that investment in early child education best investment we make, can make. In, in the state of Wisconsin, in our poorest zip code, with kids that need quality, high quality early education, there are no high quality early childhood education programs, period. Think about that. 
As governor, I will make sure we are going to have a pilot in 53206, and we're going to have a high quality educate, early education program, and we're going to pay for it. Bottom line, those kids need it first. Second of all, I have had a plan in front of the legislature for the last three biennium that's called Fair Funding for Our Future. It is something that had been implemented at that time. We'd, be, we'd have $1,600 per kid on average across the state of Wisconsin. And more importantly, that aid will have been distribute, distributed equitably, fairly. The, my theory of action has always been the kid needs an extra lift. He or she should get an extra lift. And if that extra lift costs money, so be it. That's what fair funding is all about. I have school boards across the state uh, supporting that. I have to talk quickly about higher education on Board of Regents. It's the worst part of my job. We've gone in Walker's term from 50% um, uh, state aid to the University of Wisconsin system to 15. No wonder people have lots of debt. We have to do our job there. And I know I have to talk about vouchers. I've fought against vouchers. I've kicked out 20 or 30 uh, uh, schools from the program for malfeasance and all sorts of bad things. I prevented schools from getting into the program. As my friend Dale Schultz said, Republican, we cannot afford two systems of, of publicly funded schools, and now we have many. We've gone from a school a system that was around choice to a system that's around flat out subsidizing. We can stop that. I, I will freeze it, and we will stop it. Thank you. Here's the question. After the first four years of your administration, what will Wisconsin look like? And how a hell of a lot better. <laughs> Here's the deal. My campaign is based on some really basic Wisconsin values. They're not necessarily Democratic values or Republican values. It's things that people care about. First of all, our schools. We have to make sure that we have adequate funding for our schools. We have to make sure that that funding is equitably distributed. We have to make sure that our University of Wisconsin system, we 15% doesn't cut it anymore, folks. If we want to invest in the best thing for our economy, and most importantly for our democracy, we have to invest in our system, our, our, our K through 20 system. And I'll use this as a quick example. You see what's going wrong in higher education when Stevens Point and Superior are saying your humanities don't count, in my humble opinion as a parent and grandparent, the hell they don't count. That's what makes kids and young people better adults. The other issue that's a huge, uh, huge, hugely important to me, it's a value, it's a Wisconsin value, is making sure that our natural resources are protected. We are going to be balancing the needs of the environment and, and young people wanting to stay in the state because of our natural resources and also businesses. Clearly, the businesses are, are winning out. We will have a clean environment. We will, have, we will have protections in place, especially for our water. We will also, after four years, we will have money, adequate money for a transportation system. I believe that's a bipartisan issue. People don't want to have uh, second-class citizenship in the state. They want to have good infrastructure. They want to have good internet. People in Wisconsin, deserve it all across the state. We will get that. That is a Republican and Democrat issue that we, we will succeed on. The other thing that's critical, and we've talked about it before, I believe by taking the Medicaid money and making sure that it's invested wisely in our system, we won't have the need to have the Wisconsin Dental Association uh, put together a mission of mercy in the state of Wisconsin so that people uh, can have their teeth extracted and, and, and make sure their teeth are clean and they're healthy. We can, that is not the Wisconsin that we want. We, at the end of four years, that association will not need to do mission, uh, a mission of mercy for, for, our, for our state. The last thing I want to say, after four years, we will be in a position to re-elect me as governor. <laughs> I am the candidate standing up in front of you who has won three times statewide. I'm someone that has in charge of agencies and school districts over my 40-year my career. I know how to run things. I, I pledge to you that the people of Wisconsin will have not political hacks running their agencies, that 
deliver services that you are needed. We need to have people in charge of those agencies that actually know what the hell they're doing. That's a pledge of mine. That you will see after four years also. Okay. Thank you so much for being here.